Astralis. I'm your life coach astrologer, Cindy. Today's video, I am interviewing Dana Palku. And she happens to have been at the Giza Pyramid on the 22nd of February, 2022, under the organization of Matias De Stefano, who is uh, known on Gaia TV. And he was preparing us for this event on the 22nd to shift Mother Earth and humanity into a new timeline, preparing us, explaining to us that we are all creators and um, creating, um, being mindful of our thoughts and our heart coherence. And I'm also a member of Yo Soy. Yo Soy is Spanish for I am. And so, um, so now Dana Palku was part of being there live with about 2,000 people. And so let us get to know Dana. So I'm going to now introduce you to Dana Purka. <laughs> so hello, Dana. Hello, Cindy. And so I have... I, I would like to um, get to know you with the rest of, of the people here because um, um, you were so kind as to say, I will, I will answer your questions and what happened in, in, at the Giza with Matias. And so, first of all, I want to know, what country are you from? I am Romanian. I was born in Romania, but uh, in 2003, I moved to Italy and I live in Rome since. I've been living in Rome since then. Um, how long have you been, how long have you been following Matthias? And what was that pull that I must go there? Because there's a reason why we all wanted to go there. Well, I've been, I, I, I think I met Mattia online. I saw one of the videos maybe two years ago, I think before the pandemic happened. And I, I don't know, I was attracted. <laughs> you know, I listen it, you know, I study myself, I am an esoteric student. So I studied lots of esoteric books, hard books, but I, I love Matthias approach because it's so simple mm -hmm. and so kind of down to earth, simple language, because the book I read, they were so complicated and sometimes you need someone to explain them to you. So I was attracted by that. So I kind of following, not kind of constantly following him. And I, I, I heard about the, the event, I think last summer. And I thought, oh, oh, I would really love to go there, you know, but I wasn't very sure. I said, oh, I look at the prices. I'm not sure if I have the money. I wanted to go to the pyramid. So I was kind of reflecting on this. And then on, in January, I told a friend of mine, you know, I found this guy. I would really like to go. I'm not sure if I want to spend the money. So I was like, you know, and she, she said, oh, my God, let's go. And she was like, let's go, let's go. And then, oh, we should pay for the price. We can go into the pyramid with him. And I said, OK, this is what I needed, a kind of a push. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, so we you, went the fire with, group. you went with one of your friends. From yeah, who didn't know who didn't know Matthias at all till January. But she was into the new shift, new earth movement. Yes. Absolutely, yes. 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 Wonderful. That's so wonderful. And so from um because there were COVID mandates in regards to traveling, because if I would have gone, I probably would have not been allowed to come back into Austria because the mandates here were really bad. I, it was, it, 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 <laughs> I felt a little broken in February and I had to take, I, I took the whole month off um, from three days of working just to bring myself into balance to prepare myself for, for Matthias. So I, I, I just like, I don't care about the money. All I care is about this work. 
Yes. And we, a lot of us had to think about money. Either we go there, but. Absolutely. Yeah. It happened to me. More of this, you know, not knowing I cannot, you know, after like the 20 something January, I knew I cannot get COVID because then I won't be able to get out of the, comp the, 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 the quarantine. So I kept, I kept my daughter home from school. <coughs> there were some cases in the school. So we, mm -hmm. we stay home. I, I limit my, you know, everything I, I could do done. You know, I just, I, I didn't my, go. To my school. question is, um, did, did, were there laws in Rome that you had to be yeah. uh, vaccinated in order to go there? Or how was that? Well, they, you know, it, the Italian said, you can't go to Egypt unless you have something really important, not for tourism. You were allowed to go to Egypt to the seaside that because that were COVID free flights, but to Cairo, it would is considered a dangerous place. And they suggest the government, the Italian government said, don't go to Cairo. Mm -hmm. Unless, and then I was prepared thinking, oh my God, do I have to get a paper from them? I was even thinking to just write the paper, I'm going there. So I was preparing to say, you know, I went there for a job because that was allowed because I don't have any family or <laughs> any kind, any relatives in Cairo. So I would say, I would have said if someone would have asked, but nobody asked me anything. Okay. So that was the beauty of the thing. You know, I, that for me was kind of unknown what will happen once I'll be back in Italy. Okay. But nobody asked me anything. So I don't know, someone there took care so, of. <laughs> so once you got to uh, Cairo, once you landed, um, how, how was your experience? Did you, uh, how was your experience in navigating your way towards your hotel and, um, um, because they know a different language or were they speaking English? How was yeah, your they were speaking, experience? They were speaking in, yeah, I was in a group, English speaking group because of lot, lots of Spanish speaking groups in, uh, in the fire groups. And- uh, so Were you in the fire group? I was in the fire group, yeah. Wow, I wanted to be part of the fire group. That means you went inside the pyramid yes. with Matthias. Uh, I got to yes. hear about that very soon. Yes, yes, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. then you got to your hotel. Everything was fine because you could talk to them in English. Yes. And what hotel did you stay at? Uh, uh, it's called... Uh, huh. I don't know if it's Hilton. No, Marriott is a Marriott hotel, Cairo. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's one of the big chains. So Was it right they pick us the pyramid. Could you see the pyramid from no, there? No, no. The water group stay there. So yeah. us as a fire group, we all kind of almost all of us in a Marriott in the Cairo, in the center of Cairo. Actually, we could see the Nile mm -hmm. from our, you know, from our uh, room, from my room. I, I was put in a room with the, someone else from Hawaii, which a girl like I, you know, I didn't know. And funny enough, she was in the first group who got into the pyramid. I was in the last group. Oh, so, okay. so like we had the totally like two different experiences. Yeah. So I want to explain to those out there who don't know uh, the groups. Um, Matthias, does Stefano know? Um, made four groups in regards to the elements. There was the, the, the air, um, there was the earth group, the, the um, water group, and the uh, air group, and the fire group. And then there was the etheric group that stayed at home to, and, and looked at it live <laughs> and we just added our energy with it. And so, um, each group had a different um, duty role. Yeah, yes. duties. Yeah, and so um, as a uh, fire member, what can you summarize your duties? Well, it was more complex. So all the fire group we were like fourteen hundred people, more than fourteen hundred people, and we were divided in forty-five groups. 
smaller group, like 33 people each group. Mm -hmm. And each of the group was assigned one of the letters of the Atlantean alphabet. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, oh, mm, we had three types of for each letter. I was in a physical, physical, and there were others in the emotional and other in the spiritual group. So uh, I was in the group 15 and each number has a three physical, spiritual and emotional. So and I was how, that's. And how was it um, with uh, your group? Did you bond with them? Did you exchange numbers? Do you feel like you have made friends for life? How was the, the energy where you're always together? Did you go to lunch together or how yes. was it? So we, I met previously going to uh, Egypt. I met my group. We were in contact since January, and we had two Zoom calls with all together to harmonize and to talk and to meet. That's and wonderful. we had the WhatsApp group. We still have the WhatsApp group. We were still communicated, communicating. And the people I met really like. I feel like I I knew them since forever. And it's, it, we created such a wonderful bonding and wonderful, we were always together, we, we had to, because otherwise we would have lost to ourselves in that, you know, 2000 people in the each, each day. And we had to do a work together. Each of us was assigned a node of the earth and we have to um, preparing to the, the event. We had each day to do a specific job thinking of our node. So you had to meditate together or apart? Uh, come we, together to no, meditate and bring we, energy within that yes, earth node? Yes, we have, each day we were assigned a specific task to a specific chakra and we had chakra to do our earth, yes? Chakra, yes, yeah, for our, our chakras. We work in you know, the seven chakras on three different levels. And uh, we work specifically on each of us in our node. And, um, you know, the fire is there to ignite. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the fire. water was to remember. Which is that know? energy of creation. Absolutely. Forward. <laughs> Absolutely. So this is what was our role, to uh, take the energy, the, the information, and then just to ignite it. Mm -hmm. That was our, our task. Yes. I really wanted to be part of the fire crew. Um, and so for those who are watching who don't understand, um, a lot of us who were part of this, we were all about um, bringing in the universal light, divine love, and um, lifting up Mother Earth it, because she is going through a shift and uh, we are all about um, removing the old paradigm mentalities and uh, laws, rules, regulation through meditation and also through inner healing that we're all about healing our own because we are adding our own energetic um, bodies into the collective. And so when we're doing the inner healing and we're doing the meditation, it's like we are adding that energy into the new earth collective, the new paradigm, the new timeline, because uh, um, we understand that there's a timeline split that is happening at this very moment. And we're trying to help humanity to awaken and to go into a better timeline. So um, now I want to ask you, um, in regards to getting uh, Dana, when you had to go to from your hotel um, to to the location where Matthias was, um, he had mentioned uh, um, you all had times like you had a calendar of Absolutely. when you had to be there, and did ever was. Did everything flow right? Was everyone able to get there on time or were there, did you miss your bus? <laughs> uh, 
No, I think we were, we had a um, uh, coordinator of the group and she was really kind of make us very aware that uh, we have to work as a group and we all have to be in time. We have a specific bus just for us. So we would go, we will move from the hotel to the pyramid with the hour bus only. And we have to all live together because I don't know if you know, because we are like 45 buses going, moving through Cairo, which is like, you don't know. I, I don't know if you see the traffic in Cairo is one of the worst traffic ever. Mm -hmm. So they had police blocking out the streets for us to pass in order wow. to not to be blocked. So we were, I felt like, oh, I'm a kind of a VIP, like, you know, football VIP. <laughs> VIP, they block, because otherwise we would have blocked the city. Yeah. So they had to make us like a, like an empty street. So to pass, you know, otherwise it would have been, would have been a disaster for the Kairos traffic. And for us, we wouldn't have been able to go to the event properly so because we had to- The Stefano had a lot of, um, he organized it so well, yes. didn't he? Absolutely. He's, he's like a perfectionist. He did, and he prepared It was very everyone. well done. Yeah. It was very well done. And I have to say, because he, I think it's something else to organize that in Austria or in Germany, where the things can be really like precise. The people are like that. The people embody that type of energy of order. Mm -hmm. Egypt, it's the completely opposite. So in order to have that organized, it's not as easy if you come from a different mentality. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I don't even, I have no idea what he, they went through <laughs> organizing. Mm -hmm. and, because, and they yeah. made it, and you guys made it Absolutely. on the news from what I heard that Egypt. Well, was yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, I think so, you know, because even in the time of COVID, there were not many tourists around because they were not able to fly. To, to come into the country, you know, especially in Cairo. So like suddenly lots of people coming to Cairo, to, you know, visiting the pyramid. We had to go to, into the pyramid during the uh, night when the pyramid probably were closed. I'm not sure, but they were closed for the public. So in order just to be just us inside the pyramid. VIPs in the pyramid. The, yes, and VIPs. The, we're like VIPs. <laughs> and, and there were um we I was part of the live stream I was part of all of it in the um from through throughout the whole time every day on YouTube you know meditating with Matthias De Stefano and then being part of it live and and I I just saw like all the people dance I was dancing in my in my um living room with everyone and I had I had my my uh crystals and everything and Matthias just Matthias said don't bring crystals inside the pyramid because the the um the officers there they're so strict and then you can't go in and he says and then it's not his fault and but but I was thinking he, he you know of course women have a um we have like something that's hide it in <laughs> The bra. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, Matthias. <laughs> and so, um, did you take any kind of um, tools or crystals with you um, that you're able to like hide? Because there are tensor rings made out of copper that you could just put on your. On yeah, absolutely. Your, yeah. Yeah. Or or earrings, you know, with coils and stuff. Yeah, well, I have, I work with crystals, but I would not be able to bring my crystal because it's just, uh, and I don't have it now with me, just like a big laser crystal. I work for healing. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that, you know, you need to break it. You know, I could not have any bag inside with me. I had the, my jacket because I, inside the pyramid, it was very warm, hot and humid. Outside was really cold because it's night. So I just had the jacket that I, I just put underneath and I have the t-shirt. I could not bring any bag or anything, just a bottle of water. Mm -hmm. So I, I had the crystal um, that someone really nicely uh, as like a medallion 
-hmm. I have, a, I sent you a picture. So you'll see okay. there's a beautiful lotus flowers, which was suggested for us as a physical group to wear. Mm -hmm. And I have another piece of crystal that someone just uh, gifted me just before getting to the pyramid. It was a beautiful gift I received just getting into the before getting in the so pyramid. Was it put on a necklace or so? The, the 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 medallion, yes, I put it in my necklace. I had a and I had the crystal myself, like one of a medallion made of um, you know quartz crystal that symbolized the crown chakra and the flower of light. Mm -hmm. life and I added the one the lotus flower but the, um, the small crystal I received I've just put it in a bra because it was small and tiny I was afraid to lose it mm -hmm. and I didn't want to put it in my pocket I don't think I had pockets my so I just put it in my bra so <laughs> <laughs> it was a tiny one I was okay. really you know obeying the rules because you know I didn't want to do anything that could compromise the, the event and so um, there was the concerts and you stayed, you all had to sit together with your group. Yes. Yeah. Because I remember seeing him say, okay, get all into your groups. And so you were dancing together and how um, I could just imagine the, I felt it from my own living room. I could feel the energy there yeah and it was oh my like, god it was vamping up so strongly I was laughing and giggling and it was so exciting and I was everyone is like jumping and dancing like like indigenous people and I was doing Absolutely. the same like my neighbors are gonna be knocking on my door saying what's up with you <laughs> it was so it, it was so like um catching to not feel the energy especially if you're empathic you just feel the energy and absolutely how did you feel uh, because you have all of these um, higher vibrational people all in one location all dancing all tanking in the light all at once was it like an overload of energy did you feel like in your brain like oh my gosh like I'm getting dizzy because sometimes when I feel an overload of, of energy coming in I get really dizzy I get real high but I did feel high I was laughing I was very high <laughs> <laughs> we were like I was did yeah I felt like high? we were like a bunch of a high people with no drugs <laughs> So yeah, ever, we are high on like energy dmt secreting and everything. absolutely naturally. absolutely absolutely we looked like the places look like um woodstock you know <laughs> and people were like acting like in woodstock really high on drugs but i you know i could say i i can't speak for to all the 2000 people especially when we had to do the activation each day and we were not allowed to alcohol we were not allowed in even to eat any kind of uh, animal products so yeah. no alcohol no nothing and I suppose you know only if you sneak in the drugs but you know the people I I, they, I was in the group we we're all very conscious about it and we were literally honestly feel that kind of oneness and the joy of and the joy and the love that will make you high so yeah. that was what that was making us high, the joy and the love. Did uh, was did Matthias suggest for people during this time also not to eat meat? Yes. Yes, I think I remember hearing him say that. And the lunches were only they were vegan lunches, not even yeah. like vegan lunch. Yeah. Because so it, it it um that 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 meat energy has um there's like a like dense it's dense energy and we're yes. all wanting to vamp up our energies into a very high vibrational um level to do the work <laughs> absolutely 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 and so now i want to ask about your time in the pyramid i'm like <laughs> saving the best for last okay so um from the was it from the concert that after the concert because then uh, we didn't see after that what happened uh, they 
it usually lasted like three hours uh, or so in on live stream and then they cut it off. And so after the concert, was it then where everyone took a break, ate, went to the restroom and then went to the pyramid? Because, because it lasted, I think up till eight o'clock or so. And then at nine o'clock, you had to be in the pyramid. Uh, this, I know that every night there was one group that went into the pyramid till one or two in the morning. And how was it for you? So no, there were more groups. So each night for, we were 45 groups of 35, 33 people. So the pyramid can allow like a hundred people. So we could go only three groups. So we like 15, those groups. So we were like five groups, these bigger groups, like a hundred people a night. So and we have actually all the night, Matthias was in the pyramid from 9 p.m. to 11 in exchanging groups. So all the night, I was in the group that ended on the 22nd in the morning from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. This is the last group on the 22nd. Yeah, and that's the concert like the was, <laughs> so, so the, the concert was that night. So by the time the concert happened, we, we were done with the pyramid. Okay, so so before the concert happened, you were you were already in the pyramid. Yeah, we all the groups went to the pyramid the previous days. So like we started in when the twentieth. But there were um, there were live streams where he was talking and people were singing and stuff before the twenty second because yeah it, it started like Saturday, Sunday, Monday, yeah. and Tuesday and was, Tuesday was the 22nd of February. So yeah. it was like four days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And so um, there were they were live streaming every day. And there was, yeah. there was the gathering where the stage is. And uh, I guess I called them all concerts, but the last one was like the major one where yeah. a, a, a singer from Argentina came. Yes, <laughs> famous singer from Argentina, yeah. yeah. Yes, and so, um, and, and, but there were other ones where Matthias was singing himself, or was that the last one? But the, but, um, um, I know the last one was like the major one where there's a lot of yeah. singing and. Yeah, 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 yeah. The last, so, so each day we were doing activation and they look like a concert, but actually we were doing activation for each element. Yes. And then we end up singing and dancing. That was part of the activation. Yes. So that was even more fun because you said like, I'm here to work, but yes. we were there to work having kind of fun. You know, it's a really interesting. And the, and we were in front of the, the, the Great Pyramid. But then the last day in the 22nd, when the bigger concert was the concert like literally a concert, we were in front of the Sphinx and we had in the back of those screens, they were all three pyramids. We were in a different location. Okay. So then um, that means that the last group started to go into the pyramid already in the afternoon or in the morning? No, only the nights. So I was the part of the last group. So the last group who entered the pyramid was from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. on the 22nd. From 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. Two for two hours. Uh, actually, one hour. A.m. 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 So in the know. morning. In the more okay. early in the morning. Yeah. So so on the 22nd of February, from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m., you were in the pyramid. Actually, one hour because it takes you half an hour to get in yeah. the, yeah. the chamber, yeah. and then half an hour to get out because the the corridor is like a really like um, tiny and you have to bend yeah. down. Actually, we all have sour muscles because of we had to walk. Yes, you like said that. it was like 50 meters to go up one yeah. and then another 50 meters to go up the next. Yeah. And yeah. so were, were your muscles burning going up? The <laughs> yes, <first> yes. Afterward, <laughs> afterwards, like, well, like, oh my God, I feel all my muscles. So, so it's half an hour to get in the pyramid and half an hour to get out. So we spent inside, actually inside the chamber, an hour. 
Okay. And now, because uh, I want to ask you what happened inside the chamber. I am extremely curious because sometimes Matthias de Stefano all of a sudden has like a channeling coming through. Yes. And was there any special message that, wow, anything that happened that they said, um, because he had said that there is a certain, there was a certain higher being that would come in and then he's really strict and he'll just say like, everyone be quiet. <laughs> and, he Absolutely. Says, and, and Matthias said, you don't be offended when he says that because it's already the, the, the personality of this other higher being who is very authoritative when he speaks. And so, uh, so you, all of you are three groups, what 99 people or so or 100 people inside this chamber all around. And then is there some kind of a, like a, um, what is it called? Something in the middle, like a- No, no, there was something, there was a kind of a rectangular object. I, I don't know how it is called in the back. So it's like a, a, it was not a square, like rectangular room mm -hmm. with only one light. So it's quite dark and Matthias turned the lights off while he was doing the channeling. We were all seated on, seated on the ground mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it was really beautiful because, you know, he, we were preparing this event, you know, we were like the, for the, the maximum of the, you know, <laughs> the, 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 our trip there was inside the pyramid and he uh and he channeled various beings while i was there and it was really interesting and we are kind of all participating we were all singing without pre being prepared of you know the the song will come from from us yeah. without <laughs> It was a beautiful but, experience. But do you remember any of the message from the higher beings? Yes, yes, yes. One of the, the beings he channeled was Mother Nature. And that was a, one of the, the most beautiful moments. And some of the, my, the people I was, my, of my group, they saw literally the animals. They saw various beings who, you know, they were like, we were chanting, we were producing sounds as the jungle we i felt like i was in a jungle and i said oh my god who's making these noise is it the soundtracks or hidden but we were we were producing it all of us we were like making sounds of mother nature and when she said that she, in the mother nature said i am mother nature it's like singing it it's a beautiful thing and there were many messages in the we receive uh, in during the channeling and one of the messages is we are all creators so we have to acknowledge that we are creators and uh, we have everything we needed is nothing nobody will come to do anything for us we have to do the job ourselves and um, we are here to we are the seeds that's another message. There's so many beautiful messages, you know. Um, uh, we are part of everything. We are one of everything. And, uh, and we are here, here to share. We yeah. are here to share our, our, what, who we are. And another message was remember who you are. That was really beautiful. Yes. Wow. And for the people who are watching, who do not know what this all means, it is um, we who are a part of this uh, with Matthias De Stefano, we're all about creating and manifesting the new earth, but doing the inner healing, releasing, letting go of our toxic thoughts and creating new thoughts that are in harmony with humanity and earth, in harmony in how we are living with her. And so uh, with us creating these new thoughts and these new ways and uh, new values within ourselves, we are adding to the collective together. Our experience, there's nothing 
good or bad this experience, but just knowing that give me joy. So whatever happened is just an experience that I'm going through for the universe to learn about itself or, you know, whatever you want to call the universe of God or whatever, you know. So I'm here to just like a piece of a puzzle just to do what I have to do to express who I am in order for this big being to experience it itself yeah and um and i noticed you know i had some kind of insights from my therapies that i'm doing you know something switched i'm not all aware of everything but it's i felt the difference and and before um i wrap it up um do you have a link do you do any uh do you have a practice like yes. uh, so you're you have a therapy practice so I will put the link if anyone wants okay to, would have done a, a pal, pal cool. yeah <laughs> um then uh, I'll put your link down below what is it exactly that you do I am an energy healer and a coach a life coach and I'm also a trainer and I teach the first level of the pranic healing. This is the energy healing technique that I practice, which helps people to balance their energy, balance their chakras, um, cancel some, you know, some congestion, you know, uh, and also I help people, you know, get to where they want to be, you know, become the better version of themselves, you know. And I, I use this modality sometimes together, sometimes only healing, sometimes only coaching. And yeah, this is what I do. And I have a page on Facebook. Okay, wonderful. So I'll put your links down below. Thank you. In the description box if anyone wants to get ahead of you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank okay, thank you, you Cindy. I wish you a beautiful uh, week. <laughs> we are now entering these uh, Christian holidays of Easter. <laughs> so um, hugs and kisses. Thank you very much for taking the time for this interview. Thank you too. I'm happy I could share. That was the reason we went there so we can share about our experience. And if anyone wants to know more, you know, feel free to just, you know, to contact me, I will, I will be happy, more than happy to, to share more. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye.